Hey y'all, it's Kyle Shippey. Let's talk about winter driving in the all-electric Nissan LEAF with Sumitomo Ice Edge studded snow tires. All right, so inside the Nissan LEAF, we're looking at some gauges here. The one on the left here is going to be the battery temperature. So uh, it's a lithium ion battery and most batteries, um, it's got kind of the blue range here and a red range here. That's going to indicate um, sort of extreme temperatures. And with any battery that's in extreme temperatures, its performance is going to be a little bit degraded. So in this case, we're getting pretty, pretty close to the cold side and that means that its power output isn't quite what it is during the fall, winter, and maybe even summer months when summer it's kind of up, up over here but uh, not, still not extremely hot. So the batteries perform very well. And, uh, but at our current temperature where we are, I'm at 78% battery capacity with its current charge. So I've been driving around a little bit today. Um, and on that 78% based on my current driving habits and the temperature outside. So I, it's thinking I can do about 65 miles of uh, flat terrain, city driving. That's about up to 55 miles per hour. Um, Stoplights really don't matter because when the car stopped, it's you know not moving and really no batteries being drawn at that point. And also there's there's regenerative braking, so um, you know you can look these things up about the Nissan Leaf in general. They make it a fantastic vehicle, but for winter driving and in, in uh, these conditions, right now I can do about 65 miles um, of distance. Now that said, if I turn on the heater right now, see it's going to drop me down 52. So using the heater is also drawing further energy from those batteries it's going to reduce the estimated driving range now for me i just put on a sweatshirt i wear some gloves and i think most people who have nissan leafs are pretty comfortable just uh you know doing what they got to do to kind of stay green and everything but that's the one sort of downside of having an electric vehicle is that in an internal combustion engine, your heat is waste energy that's being redirected back into the cabin of the vehicle to warm you up, and you're not actually drawing any more fuel out. In fact, you're using uh, what's otherwise gonna be waste energy. In an electric car, that's not quite the same. You're drawing from that power source and you're gonna reduce, again, turn that back on, you're gonna reduce your driving range depending on how uh, rigorously you're running your heater. Um, and the same goes with air conditioning in the summertime. That said, if I turn on the steering wheel heating and I turn on the car heating seat right here, now I have thermal heating on the steering wheel and I also have thermal heating in my seat, but that driving range has not been reduced. So there are some nice comforts built in and because of the very low wattage required to run these particular uh, heating coils um, in the steering wheel and in my seat, it basically is negligible effect on the battery range and I can you know, continue to, to use those um, without really impacting how far I can go. So, um, so do keep that in mind as far as the cold impacting the overall driving range of how far you need to go. All right, well, we covered some of the basics. Let's go ahead and take it for a little ride around town here in the, uh, in the snow here. So um, now we happen to have a pretty light snow today. It's mostly just slush and we're kind of towards the end of winter. So I don't think we're gonna have much more um, snow this year to capture anything. Uh, I will say that um, this year, again, I've had the studded snow tires and there's just been no trouble whatsoever. I mean, it, in, whether it's ice on the ground, a freezing rain, or a thick blanket of snow for the first few days, um, I am just good to go. I get in the car and, you know, my wife gets in the car and we just get, get where we need to go and there's really no concern whatsoever. That being said, let's talk about some of the functions of built into this car. For one thing, the battery pack is spread evenly across the bottom of this car. So um, the, the weight distribution is, is, is even and we don't really have a forward uh, overweight like in an internal combustion engine that houses the engine block. Um, you have a lot of weight on your front tires and in the front of your vehicle. That comes in handy as far as putting downward pressure on your front tires to gain traction, but it also um, you know, creates a little bit of more of a sliding issue. You have more weight on one side of your vehicle when you go to brake, that's all your weight's in the front already. And uh, when you're turning, your back end's gonna have a little more, more tendency to fishtail. Um, in this vehicle, 
that I'm in right now with the weight distributed evenly across the bottom of the vehicle and not that much really on the front of the vehicle as compared to an internal combustion engine. Um, the, there's just a much more balance as I'm going through uh, driving in snow regardless of what tires I have on. The other thing that's very cool about this vehicle is that like most new vehicles, um, there's a computer automated sort of takeover of the, uh, of the front wheel drive when you start to get into a condition it starts to sense there's a condition where you're not having equal traction on your tires and that's going to happen if you are again on snow or ice or maybe in mud or you know other situations that the computer is going to kind of try to take over and and just help you get through that whatever that muck might be um, in the case of this electric vehicle because there's no wait time you know, the computer senses that it needs to make an adjustment and there's no wait time. The, the electric motor immediately is adjusting. It's called instant torque. There's no waiting for these pistons to move up and down. You're immediately uh, feeling that computer take over and you just kind of can start to feel it crawl over ice. Um, we're not gonna have an opportunity to, to feel that today, but I can tell you that when you're in that situation, it's just kind of cool knowing that the computer is gonna slow you down and, and just help take over and kind of guide those wheels over a little rough patch of ice or a little, a little roadblock that you might have. And with that, it's all electric. I live in Idaho. Our power is you know eight to 10 cents per kilowatt hour uh, right here. If I switch over, I can see that my average driving for my average fuel economy is 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So for every eight to 10 cents, depending on you know where I am in my tier for that month, um, you know I'm getting roughly one mile for every two, two and a half cents of, of money. So compare that with currently gas prices are at $2.50, I'm essentially getting 125, 100 miles per gallon equivalent in terms of money spent to drive this car. So um, fuel economy is absolutely amazing. And coupled with the fact that Idaho is 50% hydroelectric, I'm about to have solar panels on my house in a month. So I'm gonna be covering all of my driving needs with basically 100% you know, renewably sourced energy. Um, and I feel really good about that. But the economy of the situation is hugely to my advantage. So I do believe in the philosophy and the ideals involved, but I'm also a very practical person. And I can tell you that I am saving money by having this vehicle that's a simpler machine, works well, does well in the winter time, if your needs are not, you know, excessive and you don't need to get out there and, and do some huge, you know, driving around the muck or doing whatever people think they need to do sometimes, this vehicle is going to get you where you need to go and you're going to be happy you have it. And as I have been, as uh, currently I've had it for uh, going on three years and I've had it almost 15,000 miles. So I'm very well attuned to how well this vehicle has benefited my life. No oil changes. You know, there's no uh, coolant involved here, at least not for not that I have access to and can change out. So the, sim the machine is simpler. It's gonna last me, I think, a much longer time. Um, the batteries perform well in the winter time. And with these snow tires, there's just no question about it. I have no reserve whatsoever. When the, when the snow starts falling, I am ready to get in the car and do my errands and get to work on time, safely and know that I'm gonna be able to get back home and see my family. And yeah, it's a great vehicle. I have loved it 100%.